my name is Wendy Pierce. And here in New Mexico this week, I was training the kit, Understanding Weather and Climate. So one of the more difficult lessons is lesson nine. And it's a long lesson, and the directions are fairly complex. Um, but let me say this. It is easier than it looks. So first off, the big idea under lesson nine is that ocean currents are caused by several different things. They're caused, one, by the uneven heating of the earth. They're caused by the fact that um, some water is warmer than other water in the ocean. And they're caused by the fact that we have different salinity levels in the ocean. And finally, they're caused by wind. So nine, or the getting started portion is really looking at um, the uneven heating of the earth. The fact that at the equator, um, we get more direct sunlight than we do at the poles. So the density of sunlight is greater at the equator than at the poles, and so the water is going to be heated more at the equator than the poles. 9.1 has students looking at the fact that hot and cold water um, have different densities. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to heat up some uh, dyed water and we're going to cool some dyed water. Then we're going to do a small demonstration in which we have ice in a beaker and hot water in a beaker and put that room temperature water. After we have the students think a little bit about how they might test the different densities, then we drop some food coloring into a bucket with cold water and warm water, and we watch. It turns out that um, what we're going to see is a layering of water that um, we're going to have two distinct layers, one on the bottom and one on the top, that the cold water is more dense and so it sinks to the bottom, and the warm water is less dense and it sinks to the top, and it causes two very different layers. Next, the students are going to drop uh, dyed water into room temperature water, and again, we're going to see that cold water sinks and warm water floats. And then a quick little activity is they're going to blow a straw into the warm water to model upwelling, and they're going to find out that warm water does not upwell, but cold water does, so it brings those cold water nutrients to the surface of the ocean. Lesson 9.2 is the one that's really complex. It's complex um, and it has a lot of setup. You're going to have to freeze two cups of salt water that you'll make by adding 160 grams of salt to 800 milliliters of water um, per group per table. So if you have eight per class, if you have eight tables in your class, you're going to need 16 frozen cups of uh, seawater. And if you multiply that by multiple classes, you're going to have a lot of frozen water. You also need a cup of fresh water for so basically, you're going to be differentiating the water into three groups. You're going to have frozen, you're going to have the water that comes after you freeze, freeze the seawater. So you're going to drain that out of the cup with the frozen ice, and you'll have salt water there. You're going to have regular ocean salt water, just room temperature. And then you're gonna you're gonna melt the leftover ice after you have drained it, and have that as another sample of water. The idea is is that we can visually see that the water that had surrounded the ice has more salt in it than the water than just regular seawater. We're gonna test it by coloring it and dropping it into a cup, and we're gonna see that it, it goes down. It, it's more dense, so it goes down. But as scientists, we also want to be quantitative as well as qualitative. So eventually, we're going to separate out these different waters, take 15 milliliters of each, and we're going to evaporate the water so we only have salt. At the end of the lesson, you're going to actually mass out the water that came from surrounding the ice, regular seawater and the ice. And we're going to find out that the water that was surrounding the ice is much saltier and much denser than the seawater and much more so than the, um, the ice itself. So we're going to get a quantitative reading that there are differences in salinity in the ocean as well as differences in temperature. 
Finally, the last part of the lesson, which is way easier than the other two, <laughs> is you're going to take a little bit of water and some talcum powder, just put a dash of talcum powder in the petri dish, and we're going to blow and show that wind also causes ocean currents. So again, the lesson is about ocean currents and the fact that it's caused by uneven heating of the earth, differences in temperature of water, differences in salinity of water, and um, wind currents.